God says, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I just, I don't plan to do that so much as I just intermittently as I'm praying with them. I, I, I just use these portions of scripture with stammering lips and another tongue. Especially someone starts stammering or their speech gets a little blurred or whatever. Then I quote the scripture. I quote the ver uh, part of the verse and say with stammering lips, this is good. This is in the Bible. It's stammering lips in another tongue. You're beginning to have stammering lips. Uh, th so they don't think they're freaking out or they're acting like some kind of weirdo or something because often they don't know what's happening. What, what's happening to me? Number nine is, uh, now I, this seems so elementary, worship and pray out loud, aloud with the seeker. And that's kind of, I can't tell you how many people I've seen stand around the seeker and they're just standing there. They're not saying anything. So what you're wanting to do is, I think a good thing to do is to pray with them the way you prayed when you got the Holy Ghost. If you remember, I remember how I was praying when I got the, when I got the Holy Ghost. And I'm praying with them. As you flow with the Spirit, they will flow. You can create a, uh, uh, like I said, a cocoon of, of faith in God's presence with, uh, if there's more than one person when there's a group, that can be the benefit of having two or three people praying around the person. We don't want to go to the extreme that we saw in the dramatization. I, uh, that, that's something when you, the person that you're praying with says, I'm out of here. And, and, and you find you, they, 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 they're gone and you're still there praying. Uh, but worshiping around them gives them confidence and serves to keep their mind uh, that if you're asking them to be verbal and it's quiet, it's very intimidating to be verbal by yourself. But if there's two or three other people being verbal and saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, then it makes it much easier to join in and not feel out of place. Uh, some other, some practical things. Uh, Pete, would you, would you come? Uh, I have, uh, I don't think it was in one of the dramatizations, but uh, I, I can't tell you, I've seen people that they say, okay, uh, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they ask them to raise their hands and begin to pray, and then I don't know where it comes from, but out of somewhere <laughs> comes the claw, <laughs> and it's like... And while that unsuspecting person has their eyes closed, it's, and, and then it goes to the neck. And, it, and what you find is the person, uh, they're going, if they're going to receive anything, it's going to be by self-defense because they're, they're praying, Oh, Jesus, please, hurry up, give it to me. He's going to kill me. He's breaking my, he's breaking my neck. Go ahead. Uh, you do not want them thinking about their neck. You want them thinking about Jesus. And if you're giving them the claw, they're, they're, they're not able... That, that'll break your concentration. Uh, by the same measure. Uh, you saw it uh, in the dramatization. Don't shake, pat, push, rub. You say, it doesn't happen. Oh, yes, it does. I... I mean, I've, I've seen the worst of it. I saw a lady standing on a pew giving, just, she was praying. She was sincere. She wanted him to get the Holy Ghost, but in her excitement, she's <laughs> mending in his shoulders. And, and how are you going to think about Jesus? You're thinking, oh, a little bit over to the left. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not helping uh, thinking about Jesus. I mean, uh, you're thinking, how long can this continue? This is pretty good. Uh, it was shown, uh, I'm still surprised how much, and that it takes place. The jiggling of the chin. It's totally unnecessary. 
uh, to say the least. It is tempting. I have seen people that you know they're this close. <laughs> and, and you think if I just helped them just a little bit, they would really break through. You know, they're just right there. And it's tempting. But, re but refuse the temptation. Uh, because some people can actually be offended. I know of a case where uh, an auntie was uh, invited to church, a young man invited his aunt, and somehow in the service she got the jiggle. And her comment afterwards was, if it's real, you don't have to do that. That was, and it was a honest observation, I think. I can't argue with what she said. Uh, so use verbal instruction. Uh, it's tempting. We saw sometimes people are tense and their tenseness becomes a resistance. Body tenseness, clenched fist, uh, rigidness, and you want to do like in the dramatization, start shaking them. And, and, and I'm going to admit in time past, I, I've done that to try to get somebody to limber up. Uh, but it's, it's not advisable. And, and, you can uh, offend people, and especially uh, people that are observing, that are trying to see, is this real? And, the, and their conclusion is, if it's real, if God pours out his spirit and gives his spirit, then, the, then you don't need to do that to the person. Uh, if they are tense, there's things you can do. You can, you can ask them to stop praying for a moment. There's other ways to accomplish that physical resistance that, that, that is there. Uh, you can ask them to stop praying and to look at you and to relax a moment uh, and uh, a compliment say, give some instructions, say we're going to pray again. Because people can get too tense. It, I, I, and I've seen that happen a lot recently. Maybe I'll mention that again in a moment. Uh, When you know someone is close to receiving the Holy Ghost, uh, may be tempted to give them a little extra, which is innocent. But if you're an unbeliever watching, you will think uh, that it, it seems to them as if you think you can give them the Holy Ghost. Number 11, uh, we saw it very humorously, but accurately. Uh, only one person give instruction at a time. When you've got one in this ear hollering hold on and this one over here hollering turn loose, you can get some dramatic results. I know of one guy that stopped and said, what the blankety do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, he's like, you people are confusing me. Uh, obviously, if you bring somebody to that point of, of confusion, you've, uh, they're probably not going to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're going to have to help, uh, you're going to have to repent and and help them again. Uh, now that doesn't mean that several people standing close by cannot and should not worship to create what I call atmosphere. It doesn't mean that you can't have a group. Uh, you know, it, you can have five or six uh, with someone it, and, and creating an atmosphere where they're softly uh, that's the case. If it's noisy, you can be louder. You match the tempo of what you're doing to kind of what's going on around you. and, and the per So you create the atmosphere that I talked about, that cocoon of, of environment and what have you. But with four, five, six people standing, you only have one that is giving instruction. You t and, and altar working can be strenuous and... and uh, it's a physical. It's a physical job, and so sometimes it can be beneficial to take turns. One give instruction a few moments, and then you can step back and let another person. But you uh, you you make a transition uh, so that the person isn't surprised. One of the things uh, that I just might mention is if you put your hand on someone. Uh, you don't want to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off every, you know, uh, again, because you're wanting the person to, to concentrate. You want them to stay focused. So anything that you can do to help them 